Good morning. Today we are going to be working with the synthesis of tetraphenylcyclopentadienone, which corresponds to the chapter 3A of your book. In this case, we are going to use the previously synthesized benzyl and dibenzyl ketone. Here we show the mechanism of the reaction. First of all, the hydroxyl uh, remove one of the hydrogens of the alpha uh, alpha hydrogen of the divenzyl ketone, which leaves one ion and generates one uh, carbon ion. After this, this anion is going to attack one of the carboxylic uh, carbons of the benzyl and uh, is going to incorporate this two skeleton molecule to, uh, to benzyl molecules to the other benzyl molecule which is the benzene right this new generated anion is going to be protonated by the solvent which in this case is ethanol after this an anion in the solvent is going to remove to, to remove the labeling proton in the in the skeleton and a hydroxyl is going to be removed after the uh, electronic reconfiguration the this hydroxyl is going to be ejected a double bond is going to be formed between these two carbons and a carboxylic group is uh, the adjacent group of this uh, double bond that is going to be generated. It is uh, noticed that there is a delocalization in all this region over here, which is going to be helpful for the for the 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 purpose of this reaction or the, the product that is going to be used for the next and final reaction. This is an example of an elimination A1CB mechanism where the proton come off first, as you can see here, and then the leaving group always leaves the reaction. It is very important for you to notice and for us to clarify that this reaction should be shown as, as a two-step mechanism but we incorrectly showed showed this here as one-step mechanism so make sure that this is shown separately as two steps mechanism then an anion of the solvent is going to remove the other a alpha proton from this benzene ring and another anion is going to be generated in the molecule. Then this anion is going to attack the other carbonyl group uh, from the other benzene that comes from the benzene, remember. And as a consequence, a five-member ring is going to be formed and an ion is going to be generated in the position of, the, of this oxygen over here. Here again, the anion is going to be protonated by the solvent. And again, we are going to, to experience one elimination reaction in which one proton is going to leave first this then the living um, group that is in this case the the hydroxyl is uh, is going to be eliminated from the reagent uh, from the skeleton and as a consequence we will generate a double bond as a consequence again from a from an elimination mechanism this is again an example of an elimination e1cb mechanism where the proton comes first and then the living group uh, always leaves 
And again, this reaction should be shown as two steps instead of one that we show over here. This product is deeply colored. The appearance of this color is a consequence of the increased pi electron conjugation as sign that the reaction was successful. As I, as I mentioned before, the conjugation is being generated by each of the elimination reactions. Um, this um, molecule is almost completely delocalized, and this electron uh, high configuration is the one that that uh, that is uh, the cause of the color of this product. It means that the purity and the obtention of this product can also be determined physically uh, at first instance by uh, looking at this color when the crystals are formed. Again, the, re re the resonance reveals the anti-aromatic character of the pentadienyl ring. As you can see here, uh, in this resonance form, the five-member ring has a 4p electron making a 4np system or anti -hydromatic. This anti character of the molecule make it, makes it more, much more reactive toward the next step in the synthesis of hexaphenyl benzene. Then we move forward to the experimental procedure. In a 100 milliliter round bottom flask, we need to add 1.05 of benzyl grains of benzyl, 1.05 grams of divenzyl ketone, 20 milliliters of ethanol, 95%, 0.15 grams of potassium hydroxide, and two boiling chips. Again, you need to attach reflux condenser requirement and bring it to a gentle boil and reflux it for 15 minutes. Then you need to make sure uh, the mixture turns to deep purple color and then is when you need to cool to room temperature and then twice bath. Collect again the crystal on Bonchard funnel and wash it with 10 milliliters of water and 10 milliliters of cold ethanol. Allow the product to air dry, check the weight and calculate yield, check the melting point that must be between 218 uh, and 220 degrees Celsius. As partial consideration, um, you need to take into account that the product has a deep purple color, the recrystallization is not necessary and you need to follow safety precautions because the potassium hydroxide is a strong base that can cause serious chemical burns both as a solid and when it's in solution. Again, when you get the product and that is crystallized, you need to obtain an IR spectrum and you need to obtain a proton NMR spectrum. In the case of the IR, you need to use this minimal sample possible since it may not be possible to recover it. And the proton NMR, the, the proton NMR you need to use a chloroform as the solvent and recover your sample by putting in the solution onto a wash, a, the wash class and allowing the chloroform to evaporate. In this case, we are going to obtain a UV visible spectrum in chloroform. And this is going to be all for today's experiment. I hope you understood all the mechanism steps. Again, if you don't understand or have any doubt regarding the, the mechanism or this experiment in general, you can contact me by email and we can arrange individual meeting if needed or we can share emails also if needed. Hope you have an excellent week and see you soon. Bye bye.